Thornton Tomasetti, we're embracing the use of mass timber in buildings as a way to improve our own health and the health of the planet. Wood has been used in construction for millennia, but now technology is advancing our ability to build taller wood structures using mass timber. As environmental concerns drive the demand for these buildings, the obvious question becomes, how do we address fire safety in a tall timber structure? I'm Paul Becker, Senior Principal and Office Director of Thornton Tomasetti's Portland, Maine office. And I'm joined today by Ali Ashrafi, a principal in our New York office and the leader of our performance-based fire engineering service. Welcome, Ali. Good to see you. Good to see you, Paul. I wanted to start off by asking you, what do you feel is the biggest misconception about timber buildings and fire safety? Great question. I think the main misconception is when we when people think about fire and wood, they're really thinking about light wood construction. And heavy timber is very different from light wood. So heavy timber is very hard to set on fire. And when it burns, it burns slowly. And you actually have to have a constant input of heat into it to keep it going. So if you don't do that, it will stop burning. And you know, uh, when you think about mass timber in a fire, it is increasing the temperature of the heavy timber and it's causing it to char. But that, that inner core of wood remains fairly cool. That is right. Great. So how would you say that heavy timber compares to other uh, materials that we would use in a structure, steel and concrete, for instance? So each material has its own strengths and weaknesses when it comes to fire. So for example, if you look at steel, steel is a very strong material, but when it's exposed to fire, it heats up very quickly. And so you'll get these large thermal expansions and they could cause damage. Steel also loses a lot of its strength at higher temperatures. And so the combination of these two, that expansion and the loss of strength really makes it vulnerable to fire. When you look at concrete, concrete doesn't get hot as quickly, but concrete really relies significantly on reinforcing or tendons for its strength. And they tend to be very close to the surface. And so they could get very hot because of that or get exposed because of spalling. And once that happens, then again, you could lose a lot of your strength very quickly. When you look at heavy timber, it actually doesn't burn as quickly and it doesn't get hot. So when it's burning, you'll have a charred layer that slows down the burning process and it actually protects what's behind the charred area. So when you look at it, each material has its own strengths and weaknesses. It really is a question of designing to those strengths and weaknesses. Holly, could you expand a little bit on, on how the IBC currently views uh, fire ratings and fire design? Sure. So IBC really relies on a system of hourly fire ratings. And what you do is you take individual components of a structure. So it could be a beam, it could be a column, and you put them inside a furnace for some duration, let's say two hours. If it meets certain performance criteria, then it passes the requirements of the code. But this system relies on testing individual components. You're mitigating the risk, but you're not actually designing and analyzing the behavior of the structure as a system, and you're not quantifying the safety in that manner. One thing to mention about timber in particular is that IBC 2021 will actually increase the heights of the buildings that you could do in mass timber as part of the prescriptive code. So you can in principle go to up to 18 stories and have that as a heavy timber structure, but that also comes with limitations depending on the height of the structure. You might have a timber element, but it's fully covered. It's not exposed timber. The new IBC code is going to allow, by prescriptive methods, taller timber buildings. Tell me if I'm right here. That doesn't preclude us from using and designing a taller building using a performance-based design. That is correct. And performance-based design has been always one of the options to prove out something that's beyond the prescriptive permissions of the code. Prescriptive design allows you to provide some elements to mitigate your risk, but in fire, it doesn't actually quantify the risk. You don't quantify the safety and you don't know how the building will actually behave in a fire. 
Performance-based design is the alternative. In this approach, you actually model the impact of fire on the structure and what it does to its behavior, not only individual components, but the behavior of the structure. And so then you can actually quantify and demonstrate that you're doing a design that is safe. And so we're designing for safety as opposed to presuming safety. Another important component of performance-based design could be looking at safe evacuation during fire. Performance-based design allows us to actually look at the building, look at the occupants and uh, means of egress where we have fire, how the smoke spreads, and to design a structure and either make sure that people can evacuate safely or if they're sheltering in place, make sure that they are safe and the structure remains stable for the duration of fire. So Ali, thanks so much for spending time today and telling us about how Thornton Tomasetti uh, has an approach to fire engineering and performance-based design to help make mass timber buildings uh, practical and most importantly, safe. My pleasure. And thank you for watching and please join us for other videos in this series. Thanks a lot, have a great day.